Dear listeners, Tonight I will take you on a journey across the dark, treacherous waters of San Francisco Bay, where a tale of ingenuity, courage, and mystery unfolds. The legendary escape from Alcatraz. Sit back, close your eyes, and let yourselves be enveloped by this captivating story. Escape from Alcatraz The Untold Truth of the Alcatraz Breakout Chapter 1 The Unbreakable Fortress The enigmatic and historically significant island of Alcatraz is nestled between dangerous waters and powerful currents in the middle of San Francisco Bay. Known as the Rock, Alcatraz has evolved over time from a strategically significant military fort to the nation's most feared maximum security facility. This chapter delves into the detailed history of Alcatraz, its development, and the reasons it was deemed inevitable. Famous inmates who helped shape the island's fabled reputation are profiled, including Al Capone and Birdman Robert Stroud. Alcatraz Island's story begins in the mid-19th century when it was identified as a valuable military site. The U.S. Army constructed a fortification here, recognizing its strategic position at the entrance to San Francisco Bay. The island's natural defenses, a sheer drop to the cold, churning waters below, made it an ideal location to ward off potential invaders. Initially, Alcatraz served as a military garrison, with cannons poised to protect the bay and the bustling port city beyond. As the years passed, the role of Alcatraz evolved. By the early 20th century, it had been transformed into a military prison, housing soldiers guilty of crimes ranging from desertion to insubordination. The island's isolation and the harsh conditions made it a fitting place for such punitive measures. However, it wasn't until the 1930s that Alcatraz's most infamous chapter began. In 1934, the U.S. government decided to convert Alcatraz into a federal penitentiary, designed to hold the most dangerous criminals in the country. The island's remote location and the freezing, turbulent waters surrounding it made it seemingly escape-proof. Alcatraz was transformed into a high-security prison, with reinforced steel bars, strict routines, and a highly disciplined guard force. The message was clear. Alcatraz was a place from which no one could escape. The transformation of Alcatraz into a maximum security prison was an engineering marvel. The existing structures were fortified, and new facilities were built to ensure that the prison could contain the nation's most notorious criminals. Each cell was equipped with minimal furnishings, a bed, a toilet, a small desk, and a sink, designed to prevent any attempt at concealing escape tools. The prison's layout allowed for constant surveillance, and the guards were vigilant, ensuring that inmates had little opportunity to plot their escape. One of the key reasons Alcatraz was considered inescapable was its location. The island sits over a mile from the nearest shore, surrounded by the cold and turbulent waters of San Francisco Bay. The currents are strong capable of sweeping even the strongest swimmers away from safety. Additionally, the water temperature rarely rises above 55 degrees Fahrenheit, making prolonged exposure potentially fatal due to hypothermia. These natural barriers reinforce the prison's defenses, creating a psychological as well as physical deterrent for those contemplating escape. Al Capone and Robert Stroud are two of the many notorious criminals who ended up on Alcatraz. 1934 saw the relocation of Al Capone, one of the most infamous gangsters in American history, to Alcatraz. His presence at the prison was evidence of its status as a holding facility for the most notorious and dangerous criminals in the country. Despite his well-established reputation, 
Capone was unable to circumvent the regulations at Alcatraz. After losing his status and authority, Capone was reduced to the status of a common prisoner and had to endure the same terrible conditions as the other inmates. The Birdmen of Alcatraz, Robert Stroud, entered the jail in 1942. During his previous confinement at Leavenworth Penitentiary, Stroud had developed an encyclopedic knowledge of birds and a reputation for violent behavior. Stroud's days of bird watching at Alcatraz were finished, but his fame only served to heighten the prison's allure. His narrative, which was later made famous by a Hollywood movie, presented a nuanced picture of a guy whose academic interests stood in sharp contrast to his violent background. The presence of such high-profile inmates contributed to Alcatraz's fearsome reputation. The prison became known as a place of last resort where escape was impossible, and the harsh realities of life behind bars were inescapable. The strict discipline, combined with the psychological torment of isolation and the knowledge that freedom was just out of reach across the bay, created an environment designed to break the spirit of even the most hardened criminals. Alcatraz operated as a federal penitentiary for nearly three decades, during which time it housed some of the most infamous criminals in American history. The stories of those who lived and died on the rock are a testament to the prison's enduring legacy. The combination of its remote location, formidable natural defenses, and the presence of notorious inmates created a legend that still captivates the public imagination. Chapter 2 The Escape Protagonists in the shadowy confines of Alcatraz, where the clanging of metal and the echoes of despair were ever-present, three men dared to dream of freedom, Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin, names that would become synonymous with one of the most audacious prison breaks in history. This chapter delves into the backgrounds of these men, their reasons for imprisonment, the serendipitous circumstances that brought them together, and the unique blend of skills and characteristics that made their escape plan not just conceivable but feasible. Frank Morris was a man marked by intelligence and an indomitable will. Born into a life of hardship, Morris had to fend for himself from a young age, bouncing between foster homes. His formative years were a turbulent blend of neglect and survival, which honed his sharp mind and street-smart instincts. By the time he was a teenager, Morris was already known to law enforcement. His criminal record included burglary and armed robbery, crimes that eventually landed him in various correctional facilities. It was in these institutions that Morris's intellect shone through. He was known to have an IQ of 133, placing him among the top 2% of the population. Yet despite his intelligence, or perhaps because of it, Morris could not be contained by conventional prison walls. His repeated escape attempts from lesser prisons marked him as a high-risk inmate, eventually earning him a place in Alcatraz. In rural Georgia, John and Clarence Anglin were born into a big, close-knit family consisting of 13 children. The Anglin brothers were taught the importance of cooperation and ingenuity at a young age while growing up during the Great Depression. Their family was struggling financially, so they turned to petty crime, namely bank robbery, to sustain themselves. John was typically the one in charge of planning because of his endearing demeanor and laid-back style, while Clarence was the reliable partner because of his quiet strength and steadfast loyalty. They were subsequently apprehended for their illegal operations, which resulted in their incarceration in different state prisons. Following several failed attempts to break out of these establishments, they were also judged to be too dangerous to be housed in conventional jails and were moved to Alcatraz. The convergence of these three men in Alcatraz 
was more than mere coincidence. It was a meeting of minds driven by a shared desire for freedom and an unbreakable spirit. Within the oppressive confines of the prison, they found in each other the perfect accomplices. Morris's intelligence and methodical planning, combined with the Anglin brothers' physical prowess and familial bond, created a formidable team. Their characteristics and skills were complementary, forming a synergy that was essential for the execution of their daring escape plan. Morris' mechanical skills and ingenuity were crucial in devising the intricate details of their escape. His ability to think several steps ahead and anticipate potential obstacles made him the natural leader of the group. The Anglin brothers, on the other hand, brought a different set of strengths to the table. Their experience with manual labor and construction work gave them the practical skills needed to carry out Morris's plans. Moreover, their strong bond and unwavering trust in each other ensured that they could work seamlessly together, even under the constant threat of discovery. As they toiled away in their cells, Morris and the Anglins carefully cultivated relationships with other inmates and even some guards. These interactions provided them with valuable information and occasional assistance. Accounts from fellow inmates who interacted with Morris and the Anglin brothers paint a picture of men who, despite their criminal backgrounds, possessed a certain charisma and charm. Morris, in particular, was known for his quiet demeanor and piercing intelligence, traits that earned him a degree of respect among both inmates and guards. Interviews and personal recollections from those who knew them offer a humanizing perspective on these men. Fellow inmates recall the trio's determination and the meticulous nature of their preparations. One inmate recounted how Morris would spend hours studying the prison's routines and layouts, always with an eye towards potential weaknesses. Guards who later reflected on their interactions with the trio noted their polite and cooperative behavior, which often masked the brewing storm beneath their calm exteriors. It is evident from studying the lives of Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin that a number of decisions and events that shaped their voyage to Alcatraz affected their destiny. With the combined skills and experiences that each guy brought to the table, the seemingly impossible became achievable. Their upbringing, which was marked by a combination of cunning, resourcefulness, and fortitude, prepared the ground for one of the most fabled escapes in history. Chapter 3 The Ingenious Plan As we delve into the heart of this remarkable story, we focus on the ingenious escape plan devised by Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers. This plan, a testament to their resourcefulness and determination, was meticulously crafted over months of careful preparation and unwavering resolve. In this chapter, we will explore each step of their plan, the tools they used, the challenges they faced, and the incredible ingenuity that made it all possible. The first step in their escape plan involved widening the ventilation holes in their cells. These holes, initially small enough to prevent escape, were ingeniously expanded using tools fashioned from everyday items. Morris and the Anglins used spoons stolen from the prison cafeteria and saw blades smuggled from the workshop. These crude yet effective tools were painstakingly sharpened and modified to chip away at the concrete walls surrounding the vents. Night after night, under the cover of darkness, they worked in silence the sound of their efforts masked by the ambient noise of the prison. Creating the dummy heads was another masterstroke of creativity and patience. The heads were crafted from a mixture of soap, toilet paper, and real human hair collected from the prison barbershop. Each head was meticulously painted and detailed to resemble the sleeping inmates. They even added eyebrows and eyelashes, 
using paint and human hair, to enhance the illusion. These lifelike dummies were placed on their pillows each night, fooling the guards during routine bed checks. The craftsmanship was so convincing that it wasn't until the morning after their escape that the deception was discovered. The next major component of their plan was the construction of a raft and life vests. For this, Morris and the Anglins used raincoats, which they had stolen and accumulated over time. The raincoats, made from durable rubberized material, were perfect for the task. They carefully stitched the raincoats together using a thread made from materials scrounged within the prison, creating a raft that could support their combined weight. The life vests were similarly crafted, designed to provide buoyancy and safety in the cold, treacherous waters of San Francisco Bay. The process of gathering and concealing these materials was fraught with risk. Every stolen raincoat, every piece of soap, and every hair snipped from the barbershop carried the potential for discovery. The trio had to be incredibly cautious, ensuring that their activities went unnoticed by both guards and fellow inmates. They created hiding spots within their cells and in the utility corridor behind their ventilation holes, where they could stash their tools and materials. The challenges they faced were immense. The ventilation holes had to be widened just enough to allow a man to pass through, but not so much that they would be immediately noticed by the guards. The dummies had to be lifelike enough to withstand close scrutiny, and the raft had to be durable enough to survive the crossing of the bay. Each element of their plan had to be executed with precision and care. Chapter 4 the night of the escape and its consequences. On the night of June 11, 1962, as the moon cast its pale glow over the foreboding silhouette of Alcatraz, three men were about to embark on one of the most daring prison escapes in history. Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers John and Clarence had spent months meticulously planning their breakout, and now, with everything in place, they were ready to put their plan into action. The prison was enveloped in its usual nocturnal silence, punctuated only by the occasional footsteps of patrolling guards. In their cells, Morris and the Anglins had positioned their lifelike dummy heads, crafted from soap, toilet paper, and real human hair on their pillows. These dummies were so convincing that the guards conducting their routine checks saw nothing amiss. The men lay in wait, their hearts pounding in anticipation. As the night deepened, Morris made the first move. He carefully removed the covering from the ventilation hole he had painstakingly widened over the past months. Slipping through the narrow opening, he emerged into the hidden utility corridor behind his cell. The Anglin brothers followed suit each navigating their own escape route with practiced precision. The corridor, dark and silent, served as their clandestine passageway to freedom. Navigating the labyrinthine interior of the prison was fraught with danger. Every creak and echo could spell disaster, yet the men moved with the quiet confidence of those who had rehearsed every step. Reaching the top of the cell block, they faced their next major challenge, Traversing the prison roof, this exposed area was a potential death trap where a single misstep could lead to discovery. With nerves of steel, the trio made their way across the rooftop, their figures barely discernible in the moonlight. They descended the side of the building using a makeshift rope crafted from sheets and other materials. Once on the ground, they crossed the prison yard heading towards the shoreline where their makeshift raft awaited. The prison yard, typically a space teeming with activity during the day, was now eerily silent, its emptiness amplifying the tension of their journey. Upon reaching the shoreline, the men faced the final and most perilous leg of their escape. 
crossing the icy, turbulent waters of San Francisco Bay. The raft, constructed from stolen raincoats, lay concealed near the water's edge. With the wind whipping around them and the cold biting at their skin, they inflated the raft using the small concertina, a crucial tool in their escape arsenal. Launching the raft into the dark, churning waters, Morris and the Anglins began to paddle furiously. The bay, known for its strong currents and frigid temperatures, was an unforgiving adversary. The water, rarely above 55 degrees Fahrenheit, could induce hypothermia in a matter of minutes. Yet, the men paddled on, driven by the singular hope of reaching the mainland and their long-sought freedom. The crossing was a grueling test of endurance. The waves battered their makeshift raft, threatening to capsize it at every turn. The cold seeped into their bones, each stroke of the paddle a monumental effort against the relentless force of the water. The darkness of the night, while providing cover from the prison guards, also added to the treacherous nature of their journey. Landmarks were difficult to discern, and the men had to rely on their instincts and the faint outlines of the distant shore. Back at Alcatraz, the morning routine unfolded as usual until the guards made a startling discovery during the morning count. The dummy heads, lying in the beds of Morris and the Anglin brothers, revealed the shocking truth. Three inmates were missing. The guards quickly realized the extent of the escape. The ventilation holes, the utility corridor, the traversed rooftop, all pointed to a meticulously executed plan. Panic and urgency gripped the prison as the authorities launched an immediate and extensive manhunt. The news of the escape spread rapidly, capturing the attention of the nation. The FBI, U.S. Marshals, and Coast Guard were mobilized in one of the largest manhunts in U.S. history. Helicopters scoured the bay, and search teams combed the surrounding areas, yet there was no trace of the escapees. In the days and weeks that followed, various pieces of debris, including remnants of the raft and personal items, were found. However, these discoveries provided little concrete evidence regarding the fate of Morris and the Anglins. Final Thoughts As the years have rolled on since that fateful night of June 11, 1962, the story of Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers has remained one of the most enduring mysteries in American history. The meticulous planning, the daring execution, and the sheer audacity of their escape from Alcatraz have captivated the imagination of people around the world. Yet, the question remains, what happened to them after they vanished into the cold, dark waters of San Francisco Bay? Numerous theories have been proposed over the decades. Some believe that the trio succumbed to the unforgiving currents and icy temperatures, their bodies carried out to sea, never to be found. The discovery of personal items and parts of their raft along the shoreline lends credence to this grim possibility. The waters of the bay are treacherous, even for the strongest of swimmers, and the challenges they faced on that makeshift raft were immense. However, tantalizing clues and sporadic pieces of evidence suggest a different outcome. Letters allegedly written by the escapees, photographs and even reported sightings have fueled speculation that Morris and the Anglin brothers may have survived and successfully escaped. Family members of the Anglin brothers have come forward with claims of receiving postcards and messages, hinting that John and Clarence lived on in South America under assumed identities. Moreover, according to a letter purportedly addressed by John Anglin to the FBI in 2013, Morris had actually escaped with his brother and had died in 2008. Though the accuracy of these charges is still in question, they contribute to the continued mystery and interest surrounding the fate of the escapees. Given the meticulous planning and the remarkable ingenuity displayed by Morris and the Anglins, 
it is not entirely implausible that they could have survived. Their preparation, resourcefulness, and determination suggest that they were not merely desperate men making a last-ditch effort, but rather intelligent individuals executing a carefully crafted plan. As such, we are inclined to believe that Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin may have indeed survived their daring escape. It is possible that they reached the mainland, evaded capture, and started new lives far from the reach of Alcatraz and its guards. The enduring mystery of their fate only adds to the legend of their escape, a testament to the unyielding human spirit and the relentless quest for freedom. Ultimately, regardless of whether Morris and the Anglins survived in the bay or lived out their days in freedom, their narrative serves as a potent reminder of the extent people will go to in order to achieve freedom. Their daring escape from Alcatraz is still regarded as one of the most interesting episodes in the history of American criminal justice. It is an intriguing story that never fails to captivate and motivate. And so, dear listeners, we conclude our tale of Escape from Alcatraz. Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, with their remarkable ingenuity and unwavering determination, dared to challenge the unbreakable fortress. Whether they found freedom or succumbed to the bay's treacherous waters remains a mystery, a testament to the enduring human spirit and the relentless quest for liberty. If you enjoyed this captivating journey into one of history's most enigmatic escapes, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you never miss a tale of intrigue and adventure. Do you believe Morris and the Anglin brothers successfully escaped to freedom, or did they meet their end in the cold waters of San Francisco Bay? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, keep exploring the untold mysteries that lie beyond the, the veil of history.